Please stand by. We'll be streaming live soon. Hello, everyone. It's good to be with you today. And today I'm going to do some teaching from the book of Acts. Actually, one of my most favorite stories, which is from Acts 3. Um, the story of Peter and John healing the lame beggar. So I'm going to start at Acts 3, verse 1, and I'll read this story and then share some teaching about that. So the Bible says, One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg. He was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he held him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and he began to walk, and then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple called, gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And that's the ending of the reading. Such an amazing thing happened to this man that day. But I think something amazing happened to Peter and John. <laughs> you know, we think that at Pentecost, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, that uh, everything was accomplished in them at that point. But that's not exactly the way it was. And it's not exactly the way it is with us. The first infilling, the first baptism of the Holy Spirit was a beginning with these men. And as the book of Acts goes on, we see there's just increase after increase of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's filling an effect on the disciples and all who became part of the church. So I'm really struck as this passage opens when it says that Peter and John were going to the temple at the time of prayer. What it says in verse three, they were about to enter. See, here's this man sitting on the steps, this lame man, He'd been put there every day. And it says in Acts 4.22 that he was over 40 years old. Every day this man was put on the steps at the, uh, at the beautiful gate to beg because that was the height of his expectation. He was a lame man. He was in the eyes of the people of that time, useless and maybe cursed. And so there he sat. And Peter and John, definitely had been transformed by the Holy Spirit. Things were beginning to absolutely change in their lives. Um, the preaching with boldness, the healing, the increase of the church, things were beginning to change. But I have this feeling that those words, they were about to enter, are hugely significant. They were about, like everybody else, to walk past this permanent fixture, this beggar just sitting on the steps who's always there and appears to be totally helpless. So they're about ready to pass him by. And yet he speaks to them. And they notice him at that point. And he's thinking, you're going to just give me a few coins like everybody does. Hopefully, if I do my part right, you'll give me a little bit of money and we'll have had our transaction that I always expect to happen. But Peter and John, thank goodness, and because of the Holy Spirit, they see him. 
and then something wonderful begins to happen. I want to pause here before I say more about the story, story and look at more of the verses to say we have a lot of people like this beggar, don't we? There's an expression among the people that I interact with in the recovery community. The expression is flying a sign. There are a lot of people on street corners who beg, right? You come to an intersection, there's somebody with a cardboard, says homeless, anything will help. Um, God bless you. <laughs> that line's always there, isn't it? Whether they are acquainted with God or not, they know it's a, a working part of that transaction. If I just say, God bless you, either on my cardboard or in my words, perhaps you'll help me. We have a lot of people like that in our society that um, oftentimes others pass by, consider to be hopeless, consider to be a permanent fixture. But the Lord would have us not be like that, right? The Lord would have us see the people who are begging, the people who seem to be in permanent conditions because they're not in permanent conditions, are they? Under the hand of the Lord, under the Holy Spirit's anointing on us, nothing has to be permanent. God says that with me, all things are possible. So these people that we see on the steps, on the street, at the intersection, this beggar, this lame man at the gate, anything was possible under the hand of the Lord and through the Holy Spirit. You know, we, we, we can pass people by and we can think this can't be fixed. And maybe you have someone like that in your own life right now. I remember one time being in Boston with my husband. We were walking down the street and my husband's a man who doesn't pass by. <laughs> he always has money in his pocket. And there's lots of beggars in big cities, right? Panhandlers. So one time we were walking out in Boston and, and David, my husband, had given money to lots of people. But um, we got to this one man, and I guess maybe David at that point started to feel some compassion fatigue. Uh, like, you know, okay, I've done enough. The, the, here's one more, but I've done enough. And we walked on down the street without helping this particular man. But then David got about two blocks away and he said, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. Let's go back. And we turned around and went back. And David gave him some money. And we talked to him, interacted with him. Well, I think that's how the disciples were that day. You know, they were about to enter. But the Holy Spirit in them, the Holy Spirit that was increasingly governing and controlling their actions, the Holy Spirit uh, caused them to look at this man and to realize they had everything they needed to help him beyond the help he was looking for. So there they were, and the man spoke to them and he asked them for money. And Peter looked straight at him and saw him. Not only saw him for what he was, but saw him through the eyes of the spirit working in them for what he could become. Amen. And so Peter said to them, look at us. So the man gave him his attention he was expecting to get something, but he was expecting it to be just a few coins. Peter said to him, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. The thing they had is the thing that we all have from Jesus Christ, which is the capacity to heal and minister to people and to see miracles happen. One of my favorite places in the Bible is Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8, where it says, As you go, proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, so freely give. That is what we have, each of us, as a walking temple of God filled with the Holy Spirit. When we are filled with the Spirit, we have that thing to give to everybody. That miracle working capacity is in us because of the Holy Spirit. 
And giving that to the man would certainly increase his ability to have more than a few coins every now and then. His life would be restored so he could have a full and marvelous life. So Peter reached out and he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And he took him by the right hand. The right hand is the hand that's a symbol of strength. So he taking him by that right hand, he was transmitting strength into that man's life into his body and Peter helped him up and instantly it says the man's feet and ankles became strong now that's a marvelous thing because miracles oftentimes can be instantaneous can't they sometimes there are process sometimes you minister to someone and it might be in that moment that things change it might be the next day you know, once they've slept, they get up and they go, oh my gosh, <laughs> the Lord has done an amazing thing for me. It might be a week later that they see something happen. But the fact is in this particular miracle, it says instantaneously, the man's feet and ankles became strong. A man who could not walk suddenly could stand up. And not only could he walk now, he jumped to his feet and he began to walk and he was leaping and he was praising God. And what that tells us is that he was healed, not just in his body. Walking indicated he was healed physically, but he was jumping. His emotions were healed. That, that burden, that, that prison he was in was taken off of him by the name of Jesus, by the healing ministry through these disciples. And so now he's jumping. His emotions have been restored. The oppression is off of him. And then he's praising God. He's worshiping. His spirit has been touched by the presence of this Holy Spirit working through Peter and John. So this man has become totally new, brand new, healed. Um, when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as a man who used to be begging. And so they were astonished. That miracle witnessed to them and stirred their hearts, which is often what happens with the healing ministry is that people see a miracle and they are drawn to God through that. Before any preaching, any explanation of the gospel, they see the way that God works in the world. And that cause them to have astonishment and to, to be drawn to God, to be filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now, I want to say something about the way in which this healing was done, which is important too. And that is that the men didn't get down on their knees and just pray and say, Peter and John didn't pray and say, oh Lord, um, we really wish that you would touch this man. We wish that you would heal him. We wish that you would do something in this moment. Instead, they took the authority that they had through Jesus Christ, the authority to minister in his name, to be ambassadors for Christ, to be ministers of healing for Christ, the same authority that we have too, which is to speak and declare healing. You notice they didn't say, please, would you do this, Lord? They said, we give you. We have the spirit. We have the authority. We have the power and love within us to do this thing. And so they said, simply, in the name of Jesus Christ, they spoke a command, not a petition, but a command. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. When we are ministering healing to other people, we certainly can pray. We can ask the Lord, Lord, would you help in this? Would you help me? Would you help this person? That's certainly an appropriate thing to do. But oftentimes we're most effective when we, knowing the love of the Lord for us, knowing the authority he's given us, for us to speak as Peter and John did, to say, in the name of Jesus, walk. In the name of Jesus, pain be gone. In the name of Jesus, paralysis go. Whatever it is, when we speak with authority and declare over a person, um, we have that uh, permission from God to do that. And it is most effective because it says, on our part, we believe. And we know that we are ministering in the name of Jesus 
and that we are permitted to do so. So, this was a wonderful miracle. And I want to say something uh, in closing about it. And that is this. I read a wonderful article by a man named Steve Porter, a prophetic person. His article was on the Elijah list. Stephen talked about finding, uh, when he was visiting his sister, finding an old table that was uh, thrown out in a dump for old rotting furniture. He found this table, he was attracted to it, and he said, I feel like God is going to, um, God is going to teach me something through this table, this, this junk I found. So he took the table and as he picked it up to put it in the car, some boards fell off of it. The thing was just warped and, and just ugly and, and just it really did look like a piece of junk, but he took it home and he moved often in seven years and uh, never got that table repaired. It sat in back rooms in the various homes he lived in. But then he managed to uh, find a place, a furniture doctor who could work on the table. And he took that table to this man. And the man sanded it. He polished it. He worked on it. He nailed things back together. At the end of this work, Stephen got the table from him. And it was this absolutely beautiful piece of furniture, shiny and gorgeous and the grain of the wood, perfect. And he put the table in his house and he felt that it was an emblem of what God can do in any life. Something that we sometimes think is absolutely hopeless and useless and destroyed. The Lord can make all things new and he can make people new. And for me, this particular story from chapter three of Acts is mostly about that, that this man set by the beautiful gate was considered junk, but the Lord saw him as so valuable and nothing is impossible for God. So through Peter and John, this man was made well. He was utterly, totally restored. And through us today, we can encounter people and with the Holy Spirit working through us and with us risking to do the healing ministry on behalf of God, we can cause people to become brand new to just like this man by the beautiful gate. And by the way, the beautiful gate is Jesus Christ. Well, let me close it by saying this, Lord, help us to minister like Peter and John, to see people, not walk past them, to consider every person beautiful in the sight of God and worth saving in the sight of God and help us to join in that ministry with great courage, using the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Eu quero ser um testemunho